Bienvenidos, Ushamdi, and welcome Anne Arundel Community College learners from the spring 2023 semester taking the CTS 233 Section 400 Network Programmability course. This is the Cisco Networking Academy's Dev ASC 200-901 Certification Exam Preparation course. And in this video supplement, we're going to be taking a look at Lab 357 and specifically the is instance built-in Python function. Now, this is going to play a critical role in our JSON search function that we're going to be creating as part of lab 357 in that recursive underscore JSON underscore search Python file. And I want to make sure that we're clear on exactly how this function works by providing you with some examples. So let's go ahead and we're actually going to do this locally here. Everything I'm doing in this video, you could do locally. So if I wanted to create a dictionary, and just have an empty dictionary. Or maybe I wanna create an empty list, and that's just the letter L right there. And maybe I wanna create a string with my name, and I wanna have my favorite number. Now, the is instance built in Python function will allow me to check to see is the object, in other words, the variable that we've created here, this variable name that references an object, is it, a dictionary? Is it a list? Is it a string? Is it an integer? And so here's how we would do that. It's going to return a Boolean and I simply say is instance and we're going to provide two arguments here. Now there's different ways we could do this but for our purposes and in this lab we're really interested in the following. So is instance d a dictionary? And this is how you format this function is you provide the argument of the object that you want to check and then is it an object of that class type. So a way to think of it is, uh, a way to think of this or to look at this would be to say, is D an instance of the dictionary or, or instance of a dictionary object, right? Now it returns a Boolean. If it's true, it's true. So is D a list? No, D is not a list. Is D an integer? No, D is not an integer. So let's take a look at L. So is instance L list. So is the object that L references an instance of a list object? True. Is L a dictionary? False. So hopefully you get the idea that this is how is instance works. And this can become pretty handy if you're trying to check to see, maybe you've prompted the user for input and you want that input to be an integer. Uh, and somewhere along the line, you need to check to see, hey, is this an integer possibly before you go to do some mathematical type operation? So you can check to see, and if it's true, then we would do our mathematical operation, but if it returns the Boolean false, then maybe we take some other steps. Maybe we reprompt the user to enter in an integer uh, or a, a string or whatever the case may be. So this can become very handy. In fact, here's the code that you can use, and this is a function, right? So here's our function name, and it's gonna take input data. Now the input data is simply the object that you want to check because take a look at what each of the if statements and the l ifs and then the finally the else here so the input data is our parameter name and that's what's going to be referred to inside of the function so if is instance input data so if whatever the object that we passed in as the argument, the reference to the object that we pass in here, if that is an integer, then we print out the input is of data type integer. And LF, maybe it's a float, maybe it's a string, maybe it's a list, maybe it's a tuple, maybe it's a dictionary. So again, and there's other ways that you can do this, but this I think sort of drives the point home and provides code that's easy to look at and take a look and say, oh, so I'm checking to see if, an, if it's an integer. If it's not, Maybe it's a float. Else if, is it a string? Else if, is it a list? So here's all we would have to do to leverage this function right here is I'm gonna copy the code. We'll say edit, copy. We'll come back over to the window that we were just in. I'm gonna paste that code in. So now all I have to do is say data type and I can put in here um, 
L for the list that we had. Input data is of type list. What if I wanted to check on the dictionary? Let's see if the function that I have is working correctly. And it is. Now, here's the beauty of this. You could even, because we've got this function right here that we want to include in our code, how could I test this? So I could create a test is instance of Python module. Class test is instance and then have unit test.test case and then have in there each of my functions that is passing along information checking to see if we're going to get back the right data. Again, that'll be an exercise for a later time possibly, but start to think big picture. So here I've got all of this code. Yeah, I could sit here on the on the interactive interpreter and say, okay, what about, you know, num, right? And do these one at a time, or I could write a unit test module that comes in here and tests every single use case for my data type function to make sure that if we're expecting to get an in, to have it tell us it's an integer, that that's what we get. If we're expecting to have it tell us it's a dictionary, that's what we get, right? So again, is instance is a great way to check to see if the object or the reference to the object is of data type, whatever the case may be. Again, you can think of it as like this, right? This tells us what class it's from. And this is another way to see that. And again, is instance, oops, sorry, uh, D comma dictionary, right? So that's a way to check to see if it's true. And you can see right here, it's expecting two arguments, but it only got one. All right, well, that is just a quick little video. I wanted to walk you through the is instance Python built-in function because it plays a critical role in that recursive JSON search.py file. All right, this is all the scaffolding I think you're gonna need. Now we're gonna get into the deep end of the pool here by digging into part three, steps one and two of lab 357. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the course. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.